Welcome to Outside of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, where I find the strengths of a character by going through the series and break it down into information. This one's going to be on Dio Brando, so let's begin with the disclaimer. For respect of those wanting to get into the show, this information is going to be for parts of part one of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Phantom Blood. This is a spoiler alert. Dio Brando. The main antagonist of Phantom Blood. He proceeded to live with the Joe Stars after the death of his father. George Joestar was fooled into putting himself in depth of Dario Brando because Dario had found him on the brink of death after an accident. That's also where we first see the stone mask. The debt was Dio needing a place to live after the death of Dario. Dio was a very cunning, ambitious, and arrogant teen, and adult. Dio was poisoning George and planned to use the stone mask to kill Jonathan. After finding out the power of the stone mask by using it on a bystander, that plan had long changed. Dio was finally found out about his original plan and was going to get put away for a very long time, and possibly even executed. But then, the cops took too long to shoot, and Dio got vampire powers. He blew everyone away right after that. The story progresses on, and Dio finds more and more about his vampire abilities, even aside from his regeneration, enhanced senses, and inhuman abilities. I wasn't exactly sure on what to take into consideration when calculating the strengths of Dio, so let's first get into his abilities and then just showcase some of his vampiric powers and then get into his physical strengths and abilities that can be calculated. Dio has the ability of hypnosis. He only really uses it two to three times on screen. Jack the Ripper was probably the best example of it. Dio has this ability but he doesn't really need hypnosis when further on into the show. He's mostly respected on being so strong and his charisma already got him so many people around him, even before the vampiric powers. He has the ability to fuse. I... I don't... I, I, I don't... I, I don't know... Why... Vaporization freezing technique. Dio had got this ability when realizing he had full control of his body. He vaporizes all of the moisture from whatever body part he's using at the time, it's usually his arms. And when he's doing so, he sucks up all the heat, flash freezing whatever he's making contact with. This was usually his counterattack to Hamon users because Hamon is in the flow of the blood, and if you freeze the blood, then there's no energy output. Dio can also teleport. I wish I could explain how this works, but he literally just turns into dust and bites away. He flies away. I mean, he flies. He, he fly. He flies away. The power of his evil can physically push people back. Take this into account. Jonathan and Zeppeli are very, very strong. They can probably take some wind from a storm. They brace themselves because Dio's evil intent was stronger than a storm. I don't know exactly how to put evil into calculation, but this by itself is pretty ridiculous. Dio's regeneration is remarkable. He recovers from being almost split in half, and along with that, he can recover a severed arm with just a little bit of blood to recover with. His regeneration ability is faster than fire can consume it, but usually he has to consume a large amount of blood to fully recover and recover stronger than he was before. That's why the whole, how many breads have you consumed in your life scene was so dramatic. Along with that, the quote is pretty odd. If he was really evil, he probably would have said, how many cups of water have you drank in your life? Because that's a ridiculously large amount and Dio drank a lot of people. It's, it, they're both involving drinking. They correlate with each other, so you, Dio, you gotta stay on the same page with me. Now, let's get into the main topic. The strength and speed of Dio. Now, after turning into a vampire, Dio's physical strength multiplied to at least a hundred times over humans. That seems pretty ridiculous, but let's look at humans first. At humans' peak strength, I would say that their ability is to lift at least twice your weight. For example, the highest bench press is now around 1,000 pounds. The man that did that weighed about from 290 to 345. That makes him about three to four times his body weight, and that's probably peak strength. Dio's strength is supernatural. For example, look at all that he did after becoming a vampire. With one swift chop, he halved the skull of an officer. Then he threw one of the policemen so hard that the limbs of the thrown policeman actually cut up the other police in pieces. Even one of the arms that got cut off hit Speedwagon and broke his arm along with hitting him in the stomach area so hard that he spewed blood. He had to have ruptured something like, Jesus Christ man, that must have hurt. Along with that, let's look at the scene. Jonathan is struggling to hold the bar with Dio on the other side. Do you see Dio though? He's not phased in the slightest. You know why? 
It's not because that it's the spear piercing his hand. It's, oh, I can easily recover from that. He, he knows he can easily recover from that. He took a bunch of bullets previously. The reason why he's not phased at all, though, is because he's easily stronger than Jonathan at this exact moment. Look closer in the scene more. Dio is physically keeping himself up. Do you think that you can hold your whole body up with one hand at this angle? Now, you know what? Let's, let's pause this in reference to Jonathan video. It's right here if you didn't see it. And in there, we had shown that Jonathan had the ability to exert 89.9 million pounds of force to take apart the full metal bar that was around his neck. The bar that Dio breaks here is twice as big in width and not length, but actually it's longer in length, but that's not what matters in the equation. So that means that he outdid Jonathan at Jonathan's peak strength before he even got near to that. After getting his vampire powers, Dio automatically became two times stronger than peak Jonathan. After looking at that, I was pretty sure I was done with Dio. This is already pretty broken. No, Dio still isn't done with that. Remember how I said he has full control of his body strength? He starts walking up the wall by kicking his feet into the wall. And it's not like he's struggling to do so either. Dio doesn't need to run up the wall. He has no fear of Jonathan about what he's going to do anyway. So he's just going to take a strut right up the wall, all leisurely and all. And you saw Dio's jumping ability. It's already pretty ridiculously high. And his vampiric ability to cling to walls. He could get up that wall in like a second, but he's giving Jonathan time. I wish that it stopped there. Oh, well, we're not at part three yet. Time does not stop yet. See, Jonathan and Zeppeli together had an encounter against Dio, where they both tried to get a shot at him at the same time. In which, when looking at these stats, Dio. The Dio that first got his vampire abilities already blows them away. Well, when looking at the manga and the show, I noticed there's a statement that existed in the manga that didn't show in the show. Speedwagon had stated that Dio at this point was several times stronger than he was before. By before, they mean after the fire had happened. So all of that blood, drinking up people got him stronger, man. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's just insane. Now for Dio's speed, I was only to pick up a few things right out of the bunch. Speedwagon states that Dio is as fast as a cheetah, and I think that's pretty reasonable. Something to just nudge past that though in my opinion, because I think Dio's speed surpasses a cheetah easily. The fight with Dyer, well, the conflict with Dyer, was, wasn't really a fight, was a pretty good example of Dio's speed. So Dyer has the ability to have control of his body and make it go at ridiculous speeds. He shows up as a blur moving slowly because he found a way how to move his body at around the speed of 600 miles per hour. He's zipping back and forth in some odd use of speed. But then he uses it to jump and rush at Dio, and once he jumped, that halved his original speed because he went airborne. Dio's reaction time is amazing. Easily grabbing the attack and then taunting Dyer about the speed. Although he could already see Dyer through all of this, that, that wibbling wobbling blur thing did not matter because Dio could already see right through it. This is both an example of his speed and enhanced senses. Dyer tries to use him being caught and tries to convert it with his thunder cross split attack, but you know how that went if you watch the show. For the last ability of Dio, we're going to get into the infamous Space Ripper Stingy Eyes, and I promise to god this is not the name that I'm giving it, this is the legitimate name for it. I would have gone for a more vampire name, Essence Beams or something like that. that uh, I don't know. The Space Ripper Stingy Eyes, it's when the user creates two pressurized fluid jets of vampiric essence from their eyes. Now I'm sure that you guys know about water jets and how they cut stone and all. Those have to be pretty close to stone to stay exact. If sprayed at a distance, it's actually going to be gradually losing power the further it gets. So applying that to the logic of these essence beams, how much pressure do you think it takes to cut through multiple bodies, stone? and to reach the sky to where it would cut a plane in half if the plane was there. Water jets usually have the PSI of 90,000, that's pounds per square inch, with the effective range of 5 to 8 inches. Now for those essence beams, they can produce a pressure of 48.6 billion PSI. That's with the effective range of about 540,000 inches, which is about 8 miles up. What I don't understand though is that it just poked right through Jonathan's hands and sliced through everyone else, like that doesn't make any sense. But, that's for another video. Thank you guys. Um, ask about anybody. 
the next character, if there's not like a whole group decision, like you guys have to upvote each other's comments. You guys have to, if it's like, oh, I want that character being the next one, I should probably upvote him. Like, thumbs up his comment or whatever. Um, like and subscribe, it also helps. But yeah, thumbs up the people's comments, that really helps them so that I can know what exactly you guys want. If there's not like a general consensus of what people want, so I'm probably just gonna go do Joseph next because I don't think that many people want to see Zeppeli, honestly. Um, aside from that, I think this is where we're done here. So I hope you guys enjoy your Halloween. Goodbye.